Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order 6.30 on uh, July 3rd. First order of business. I know we're early. I'm just trying yeah, to two minutes out. early. <laughs> While the David Pierce time timepiece will off. <laughs> he wouldn't have won that ten thousand dollars or ten thousand pounds that the uh, the British Crown was offering for an uh, accurate chronometer back <laughs> so they could sail ships around the world. Yeah, uh, you know, it used to be forty minutes behind. Now it's four minutes ahead. It's amazing what a battery will do, okay. right? I found this on the web for he would win at ten thousand. See, they're going to find out. <laughs> According to the modern timepiece. All right, first up is we have a 6.30 meeting with the Finance Committee to discuss funding of the fire truck and year end transfers. Sherry, where are you going to go? Um, Elliot has the transfers. Um, I do. So if you want to read them off, you can vote and I'll record. Okay. Can we vote? Who's got three? Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so let's go to fire truck. Let's start with the fire truck. Sure. Go ahead. Okay, um, so for the reason for the meeting is to discuss the financing terms for the purchase of the new fire truck. Uh, we were looking at five and ten year uh, terms when we, when the financial management uh, team met a while back. Okay. Um, those payments um, would be about, for 10 years, it would be about $55,000 per year and 110000 if we went out for five years. Um, going with the State House note, um, you can only go out 10 years. Um, so the total is like three, how much? Three. It's 539000 so we just rounded to five fifty. Okay. So it would be a little under the mm -hmm. fifty-five thousand or one ten. And the impact on the tax rate, as I recall, Sherry, was other than duration, which is important to bear in mind. The the impact on the tax rate of compressing that to five years wasn't very much at no, all. No, it was, was it? minimal. Uh, here's the numbers are here. Right, one fifty-eight, fifteen forty. So one fifty two sixty. Sorry, I'm missing this point right here. So 1574 versus 1557, and that's based on the this year's. This year's. And really, it's a function of five additional years of interest versus $110,000, which is essentially it used to be almost a dollar on the rate. It's not anymore with the valuation of 349,000. I will say, if I could, Mr. Chair, uh, ten, a 10-year a ten, a ten state house note is a, is, a, is a clean option according to the treasurer collector. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Likewise, a five-year is the same function, 10 being the cap, the most, the farthest out you can go. Uh, rates are still under 2% at this point, and really it's a matter of five additional years of declining interest. That, those values, I think, should be an active part of the discussion. That said, we have the public safety complex and the library coming off in 2022, mm -hmm. so two years ahead. And this this authorization, for the, again, tonight's just for discussion. This authorization, we wouldn't be seeing until 18 months. They said for the bill 2021 at the earliest. So from a, a rates perspective and the amount that we, we <clears throat> contribute to, we contributed last year, I think uh, uh, $360,000 to debt total that was excluded. And this would be a little north of that, but that 360 comes off. So I think dura duration is, is gonna be the discussion here because the rates are really minimum, there's a minimum change between five and 10 years. Life cycle of the equipment better be more than 10 years, right? <laughs> So the assumption is, you know, it's still got the second coat of wax on it at 10 years, 
and you know it lasts for 30. We don't have that one year where we have everything on it on the rate. Yeah, it would be Probably. it would be that one year and that last payment, uh, last authorization uh, in 2022 would would be yeah. literally the last of it. I think it's 160 thousand is that what we pay annually. That's why there's only two years left. None, uh, none of us are a professional, uh, you know, economic experts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crystal ball is a tough thing. But yeah. between the time we end this discussion now and the time that we need to take it, what are do people? What do people think? Are there people expect rates to stay where they are for the next eighteen months? No, there's probably no, at gonna... least one. There's definitely one more, rate right now, if not two, in the next 18 months. And Could be two this year, the way it's looking. So, I don't know. If that's, I mean, if it seems that the rates are going to be going up, we're not sure. It would seem to be best to try to pay it off as soon as we could. But I think it's important to bear in mind these are fixed notes. This is a, this is a fixed note. So if we, if we borrow, if we go to the state bed and ask for five hundred fifty thousand dollars for a five year period, you're going to lock it in at that that rate at that time. The question is about well, what what happens between five years and six seventy nine ten? I think there's the towns, the the, the tension about raising money and the debt schedule is what else is in the pipeline? Are there things we're going to get our first pass uh, summary from the building review? So we have buildings of, that are going to have a capital plan and that capital plan is going to be going out 10, 20, 30 year life cycles. So that's that's something our very first meeting is coming up in early, well, mid, late July. Uh, the first pass from the architects and engineers of, the, of the, our properties they're going to have those recommendations. We expect that report to be finalized come September, October, and then build, build that into the capital plan that uh, Joe Mercanium had, had worked on with the capital planning committee. So set those priorities, get with the group, meet with, meet with the other stakeholders, and then that will come from a variety of sources, either capital stabilization, stabilization, or a future debt authorization. But again, those, that's one thing we can foresee in the pipeline for even year four through 10. Those things are gonna be in the pipeline. At the same time, our excluded debt and our total debt, our excluded debt goes away in two years, two budget cycles. And our short-term debt, remaining short-term debt is, has direct allocation. So sewer relining is direct, green communities is direct. You know, these buildings we work on will be the only thing that is broad base across the taxpayer. So I think in, in, a, in a lot of ways, we're in a good position to be talking about a stable debt moving for the next decade or so. And my, my only comment is that if you go, go with five years, mm -hmm. then the, the people that live in the town of Sunderland right now yep. are going to pay for a piece of apparatus that's going to be used for 25 years. Right. So you have to ask yourself why why would those mm -hmm. why wouldn't you spread that debt out over a longer period of time? Yep. Because everybody benefits from that fire truck, just not the people this year. Yep. Now on a three hundred thousand three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollar home, um, if you do it in five years it's gonna be an extra one seventy one. Yep. Hundred twenty nine dollars a year if you go with the ten years. Yep. So on average, it's going to be about forty-two dollars a year. Yep. So you just have to ask yourself. I sure. mean, do you spread it out over a longer period of time, and and you know you're, you are going to pay a little bit more because of interest rates, um, or does the people just live here today take the brunt of yep. the hit? Oh, you raise a great point. And it is it is the kind of equipment you want to go see. You want to see in the next parade, twenty-five years from now. Right. Yeah, not not being carried on the back of a flatbed. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Great point with respect to you know how. Again, that's the helps the definition of the life cycle. If it was something with a short life, you get after it. In this case here, 
Yeah. Well, you think you think. I mean, yeah. the twenty-five. Sure. It spreads the costs over a greater period of time mm -hmm. and. and Greater population pool in that sense. At the at the same time, though, I'm I'm not I'm not adverse to clearing it off the books. Mm. Yeah. And not having not having that debt. Right. Well, we're, we're again to re, to reiterate the point, we're fortunate in that we happen to have debt that's sunsetting while we bring on nearly proportionate debt. Yeah. If we did a ten-year loan, is it callable like? It's, it's a question I have to. Uh, not, it's not within. Not within the first five, as I recall, Susan saying. But right. so, yeah, like year seven, we're good. doing well. Right. I believe that's the case, and I'll confirm that. Casino actually brings us lots of money. <laughs> yeah. They're <laughs> <laughs> not going to bring us any money. <laughs> but indirectly, maybe. But that's a good question. Can we actually call it after five? And I, I believe that's the. I believe the answer is yes, and yeah. I'll make sure to get that. Because yeah, then you have a little more paying, flexibility. We're paying that interest in the first few years, also. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're not you're not hand. Exactly. So you'd be better off paying at at the five year because you're mm -hmm. paying off your principal quick. Right. What do you think, Mr. Finance Guru? I had a couple questions. One was actually just in relation to callable. It used to be that you were much more concerned about uh, callability of, of of bonds or notes or whatever. Uh, when interest rates were higher and there was possibility of them going lower and then you want to be able to call it in earlier and or refinance at a lower rate or something like that um you know no one's uh no one's uh, got a crystal ball here but you know we're not in an area of five or ten percent interest rates for the time being um so i would be less concerned about that as a determining factor not, not disregard it but less concerned um and the other question was going back to your uh to the timing on this, and I think you said something like the money, first money won't be needed until 21, a couple years? 18, yeah, 20, this is 19, 18. so late 20, early 21. So you're talking 18, 24 months from now? Correct. Yeah. So I have no idea how these things work in terms of when that means you'll actually, you know, borrow the money or prior to that get a commitment for it and how that works with, you know, if you pay something to get a commitment that's going to not be taken out for another year or something, normally there would be some sort of fee for that. Don't know, I'm just saying these are questions that I'd want to make yeah. sure that you were aware of, you were aware of the answers to them. I think Susan's looking for the term so she can go out to bid to see right. what we get. Right. So. You usually have to pay for a commitment if you're not going to draw down the money right away. Exactly right. I wrote that down as a, as a kind of a master question. On the other hand, it seems like the interest uh, for the for the terms you're talking about here are not going to be going down for, for the yeah. near future. So that's a good point. I like Mr. Chair, I like I like your your uh, comment about you know spreading it across the across the broader population as opposed to. But I, I understand that that's uh, yeah, that that issue's come up before. I mean that's a uh, you know this sort of makes it a little more palatable for some people mm -hmm. thinking that, gee, you know, someone who moves into town just after this is all paid off is not getting a free ride and so on. On the other hand, like you said, we're going to, we have basically at this point, I think, sort of unknown building issues coming. Right? We don't know, you know, we know they're coming, but we don't at this point have an idea of the scope or whatever. And so, you know, it's sort of, that makes me nervous. Sure. But it's stuff that's going to have to be done. So just something else to think about. You know, I just the nice part about the discussion tonight is, you know, some guidance for the treasurer collector about direction to get that information, and the choices that she gave are are kind of aligned. It's similar work. Do I do five or do I do ten? So the question is, you know, that work. At what point do we know? And um, Things like bond council, which is pretty straightforward, state authorization, ten years. Is it callable after five? I wrote that down, and then you know to the timetable. So do we do we do everything but sign the paper and leave it in the queue, and then when you need the money, you sign the paper, and, and you've made that commitment. And are there charges for it? Right. What sort of what sort of interest rates are they looking at? One seven eight, one seven nine. So on a half a million dollars, you're talking uh, ten grand a year for interest. 
drove you to, so you got either 10 grand, starting at 10 grand and scaling down over 10 years, or starting at 10 grand and scaling down over five years. Can't do my math, can't do that math in my head. <laughs> I'm trying to think how much a difference of interest it is. Either way, it's still a steep curve. It's still curve. coming down yeah, pretty right. sharp. Yeah. economic uncertainty mm. you know if if the economy goes in the tanker in the next year or so sure. because of issues you know and you get a little more flexibility there but that's that's probably the only big thing I can think if of. We, if we were if this was 15 <clears throat> years ago 17 years ago when the percentage of our debt was 16 Seventeen percent of our operating budget would be a, a much more detailed focus on it. There's still going to be a detailed focus, but when you have our debt schedule in the single your single digits of our operating budget, our total liability, we, we can't afford to be sloppy, but we also have to recognize that you know again we we happen to be in a, a a pretty good position to talk about to even have this conversation. We had the conversation down at the financial team meeting a couple of weeks ago. It's like well. How do we go about that? And it was it was a treasurer collector to her credit who said, your voters voted for an override. Issue the debt. Just be smart about it. Uh, and and the, that discussion with Senator, that, that discussion was, that was poignant, it was a poignant answer because we talked about the mixing of funds, use of some stabilization, use of some capital stabilization. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? And she just said that's five hundred thousand dollars, and the, then the taxpayers and sorry, the voters voted to authorize it. Just authorize it. Don't overthink it. I'm like okay, cold, cold water on a good discussion, but still, it was like smart. So we'll come back with some answers about um, the trajectory, the interest borne across the schedule. Susan can take a look at that and have that so we can share that across. On five and 10 or yeah, how? Five, yeah, five and 10. And then the question is, can you, on a 10 year note, can you call it after five? Or what? Can, at what point can you call the note? And then the other piece is, after the contract is signed, what are the requirements from the manufacturer of the piece of equipment for Deposit, hold, material, chassis, charge, whatever, whatever is that. Do we have to get, you know, our our, our first payment to them sometime? When? When is that execution? That, under the larger discussion of what's the timing is what I had. Well, you're looking two years <clears throat> away, minimum. Three years, three years for delivery. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because because you got 13, 13 months for delivery. Yep. Right, and so it has So the earliest it's going to be here is August of twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, they said 18 oh, 20, months. Or 2019. August 2019. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't pay until right. July 2020. 2020. I would expect some kind of deposit on that. Yeah, they get the terms. We'll figure out what those terms are, but you're absolutely right. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll put together yep. this, put together okay. these last pieces. All right. So do you guys want to make a recommendation or you want to think about it for a while? You can, I mean, we, we're not going to make the decision tonight. Yeah. It was important when to have the discussion uh, about it. When do you plan to have the final decision? I, I would think we'd need to do something here before September. Yeah. yeah. Well. Gives you a little time. And then mm, result of, of the Questions? Yeah, the call of votes. Call of votes. Yeah, it's probably a good point. Okay. Right. Transfers? Transfers. Uh, we have two copies. This is an extra. Uh, one for fire department in the amount of $7,000. A request for tasers and holsters not submitted to town meeting. Current setup expires July 1st. Uh, that is going from full-time wages to police department expense. <coughs> uh, the fire department has two. These are duplicates. Yeah, they're duplicates. Okay. 
So were there two separate ones for 7,000? No, oh, it's just okay. these came in. The police ones came in first. So. Right. Uh, the fire department has two separate transfers from highway garage to fire labor. Um, it was higher call volume than usual. So it's uh, <coughs> 900 total between the two transfers. So, oh yeah, they're moving from building expense to wages? From uh, high, highway, was garage. highway garage to fire labor. Uh, and they, they and were then those highway labor in, interdepartmental. Okay. Yeah, these are interdepartmental transfers. Thank you. And that value was 700? <coughs> uh, one of the garage to labor was 400, and the highway labor to fire labor was 500. Is that correct? So 900 total. Total. Okay. Uh, several of them went uh, going to health insurance. The first is uh, from town clerk's expense to health insurance in the amount of thirty six. Thirty six hundred. Thirty six dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the first one. I, I, I took, that's little, the first I took one. little and big bites okay. out of various. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second is twenty five thousand. That's from bigger. municipal building expense to health insurance. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um, I'm surprised. The health insurance is. And that's it's huge it was thirty thousand over. Yeah. So last year, when the override failed, we cut we out. Cut we out usually year, budget right. for two additional families and two and singles, right. for mid-year people that come on, yep. and we pulled them out. Um, right. So to get in under two and a half, and uh, so that explains that. Right. So again, this is this is the byproduct of reducing that expense in last year's. <laughs> Current year budget estimates. Got it. You can reduce it, but it's going to come back. Yeah. Well, it's it. You can pay it. Yeah. We passed it this year at least. Right. Um, so another part of that is the amount of three thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars and forty-eight cents from unemployment insurance to health insurance. Uh, there was another chunk that is one thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars and eighty-eight cents from interest on short-term notes uh, to health insurance. It was a another chunk? No, this is um, this is a separate. This is uh, four thousand four hundred sixty dollars and eighty-six cents from unemployment insurance to Medicare. Uh, there was one for four thousand two hundred and forty-six dollars and twenty-eight cents to from unemployment insurance to just general town insurance. Is, it, is that buildings, Jerry? Buildings. Buildings. Yeah. And uh, this one it was it was nine dollars from the interest on short-term notes again uh, for the civil defense expenditures. I that died. was for radios. It yeah. came in a little bit higher than what we had budgeted for. Nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got you to gotta leave with the balance book, yep. right? When all said and done. Yep. Uh, there was two hundred fifteen ninety-two uh, from again from interest and short-term notes. This is to building inspection mm -hmm. expenses That's for to new books. update the code enforcement books. Okay, the books. Uh, final one is. Seven hundred seventy-nine dollars and twenty cents from town clerk expense to, I believe this is supposed to read animal control. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's again for more health insurance expenses. So. No, that one's animal control. Oh, it's it is for animal, animal control. control. That's okay. the five hundred dollars to join the Franklin County okay. Sheriff. Okay. The um, dog. And then um, the animal control officer attended a um, class. Three or four day class yeah. to get certified. So, yeah. and is that five hundred in the twenty nineteen budget? It is. Okay. Thank you. Good. And the window is closed for all remaining transfers at this point, right? Correct. Until the fifteenth, but still, we wanted them all in. Right. Yeah. There's two reserve funds. The accountant asked that just in case that uh, the finance committee designates someone. Um, 
that could sign. Okay. Yes. So that we if, can close the books by the 15th. If there is anything that comes up mm -hmm. unexpectedly yep. uh, while I'm out of town, uh, we vote to authorize the vice chair, which is you, is it not? Yeah. Um, can we vote to authorize Alex to sign in the unlikely event that some new transfer occurs in the next mm -hmm. five days? Five days, sure. sure. Okay. So that's 4-0. When's the deadline on that? July 15th. Which is Sunday, so it's got to be a few days before that, so probably next yeah. Wednesday. Right. Yeah. So. And uh, on all of the ones you have in front of you, you've got uh, funds available signed by the accountant, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. They are? All yep. They are? Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have two reserve fund requests as well, but do those? Those don't require sort of approval, so if yep. you could just maybe make a motion. Uh, move to, move to uh, vote on, Can we? do we have to vote on them individually? You can vote on them as a you, slate. You can, yeah, as all, all of them. Vote Second. to approve all transfers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 4-0. I'll move, move to appropriate, approve the slate of transfers as presented. Second. Approved by the accountant. Second. Um, for discussion. Yep. I, I just, you know, this is just one of those learning, teaching moments. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we just look at it at uh, transferring around forty, forty-one thousand dollars. Um, for I mean, without any uh, really. Most of it, twenty five thousand plus, went to health insurance. Thirty. Thirty thousand of it went to oh, went yeah. to health insurance. Um, when when we make up our budgets every year, um, one of the first thing that we you know people start when they start cranking down on when they start cranking down on the expenditure side, that's one of the first thing they when they ask the town uh, treasurer collector about that thing, well why why are we why are we putting that in there? It seemed like an easy cut. Right. right. A year ago, it was an easy cut yeah. because it's a projected Correct. expense. Yeah, we try. Um, we always try to put a little something in there. We can't. We can never be sure how many people are going to come on mid-year or go off, and so it's just, you know, we try to figure a couple families and one single or s something, you know, depending on what's available for funds. But yeah. So I and, and again, I just want to say that. It's a lesson that we need to, to take to heart. Mm -hmm. But we'll be talking about it in eight months, mm -hmm. seven months, and we get we can't forget what we're talking about right, right now. Yeah. Right. And that short term, if I could, if I could, Mr. Chair, that short term memory is awfully important. Again, this was a, a treasurer collector who, for a couple of years in a row, said we're running way too close on insurance, regardless yeah. of the change that happened this year, which has a, a, a zero impact on the total. Uh, retail cost to the town, but it's still insurance. Right. And she's come year after year and said, no. you know, I only have two in here, and, 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 and. So you're absolutely right. Well, I, I just want to, if I could, just one step further, is that if, if, and I don't know, a lot of people don't read the newspapers any longer, and, and that's just a fact. That's, but um, one of the school systems to the north of us they they have come upon a million dollar deficit, right. and when the uh, the school accountant described it, the, the school accountant it was very matter of fact. Well, you start with a budget, and and then you have you you base it on assumptions that are made eighteen months ahead of time in the state. You know your, your enrollment may go up, your enrollment may go down, um, but they just give you what they don't. Not necessarily what they said they were going to give you. They just pay you what on your enrollment, based on your October enrollment. And so, if, and if you don't have, if you're not taking in the money that you do, you're still running the same budget, but no one's watching the revenue. So I, I would, I mean, in the past, we have put stops on spending, um, where you couldn't spend more. If you any spend a hundred dollars, you had to get. Town administrator's approval. So I guess that's why it's important when you come up with our budget that we're very careful 
that we use our numbers wisely from years past and, and we remember why we use them. That's what I'm saying. David? Good point. Nope. Scotty? No, nope. that's fine. Good points. So we have motion made and seconded for the transfers as uh, presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, we have a 3 0 vote on that. So again, if I could, Mr. Chair, the, the, the mechanism here is unexpended funds in existing accounts. Yes. So we're still within budget. Everything right. is in the global budget. We're still OK there. Because right. one of the key pieces of information that she is, how much do you have left in that account that you're asking for it to come from? So. Right. Okay. The municipal building account had extra because of the solar yeah. project and the things there that we're still um, trying to figure out as we go what the actual savings are. Plus we add the um, the sewer electric in there as yeah. well. Majority of the funds came from the twelve thousand that was left in the unemployment. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of unemployment claims, so, yeah, so there was funds, funds there, and then the uh, twenty-five thousand in the municipal building line. Is the police department transfer for arms as part of this, sir? Yes, tasers or something. I think yep. it is. I think those old timers had something when they just wrote down an X. <laughs> <laughs> Even after that, mortgage sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when you got a long name, like <laughs> Pierce. Exactly. <laughs> Did you have to do this one also? Yeah. On the second page? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's it's you got Tom in front of David. Gotcha. It's, like, it's a game. You actually, you the, there's a quiz. <laughs> challenging your challenging, challenging the viewer to do you know your assessment. <laughs> Who am I? Oh, okay. I'm good. Is <laughs> <laughs> the police? That's in there. Okay. All righty. Are we all set then? So our homework for financing is to come back with the questions that were raised in the, and we'll get back to this in our next couple of within our next couple of meetings information back from treasurer collector about bonds we'll and schedules sure what does it look like on a table thanks so much finance committee Hey, uh, Thanks, guys. Happy Independence Day. Thanks so much. You guys have a good Independence Day as well. Enjoy. Oh, there she is. All right. Yeah. I'll be so happy. Oh, you guys should come on down. <laughs> Program. So we have paperwork for donations, and we're going to have a discussion about signage. Okay. And signage, yes. Sarah, ha I think, has designs to present. I think we're looking at big jumbotrons that mm -hmm. flash. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any, okay. any areas of concern with respect to the policy donation? Donation policy? No. Um, and just initially looking for, I don't think that's a big rush. We yeah. didn't know if you wanted town council to review. Okay. Mm. Uh, Pathways Committee.
talking about regarding Riverside Park. Um, the first is that um, you may have heard that we've been mandated to do an archaeological dig. I have seen something about that. Yeah, it's kind of stressing us out. Um, it costs quite a lot of money, and um, it's also going to set our schedule back quite a bit. And we don't really have a lot of room on the schedule, but um, but anyway, um, we've ascertained that we can use our CPA funds, the, the existing CPA grant that we have for the project for the for the dig. But it's it's the we got two bids, and one's ten thousand, one's eleven. Um, uh, so is there a, a fixed list? Uh, can we get Indiana Jones? He usually works pretty free. Um, I don't. I we have a meeting scheduled next week with Eric Johnson from UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. and um, we'll be talking to him a little bit about maybe some options, yep. a field school study, um, things that we might be able to do to reduce the cost, and have him take a quick look to see if there's. A way that we can maybe narrow it down a little bit so we can reduce the cost for the dig. And inside of the dig, is there a specifications? I mean, ground penetrating radar from a satellite shows a lot of stuff. That's what we're going to right? learn. We're learning. Yeah, right. I think it's interesting. You know, we talk about the, the need and the need being mandated, the need being dictated. The question is, well, well, what is the what? What's deliverable out of that? I'd yeah. love it if they take more knotweed. There's plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> take, take as much as you want. Maybe a little bonus. Uh, exactly. But anyway, I digress. I'm just I'm curious to know what what you the know. project is area is in a national historic district, and yeah. so that's what triggered it. Got it. It's state funds, state and federal funds require any time you. Because of the river. No, no, it's because it's, it's a national. It's historic a national historic district. district. Of the town of Sunderland. Of the town of Sunderland. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Kind of like any time they go digging in Boston. Right. So because the center town is a historic district, we have to have an archaeological dig. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect sense to me. <laughs> okay. well, there was, we did tell them well, that there was, there was a wastewater, wastewater, there was a wastewater treatment <laughs> plant there. So. Yeah, I like hate to find out what's in the, the ground there. The, it's been disturbed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, the... the, the, the um, Rules seem to say that it's, if it's been undisturbed, you have to have a dig. And we said uh, it's been disturbed. Yeah. Um, and it, I, but I don't know. I. There was a bridge at one point. Linda tried. Linda Lopatica tried to. We called them talk MHC. Oh. with the the guy. She had a long talk with him, and I I guess. Yeah. No, nope, we wasn't able here. to. The one way we can kind of reduce it is if we. Um, I think take some trees out of the plan. Um, you know, do, do less deep digging. Um, so. Yeah, because the depth was one of their concerns, right? Wasn't yeah. It? Um, but uh, anyway, so Next. that's where, that's <laughs> that, where we're at that's with a that. Good, good update. So the second thing was about um, signage, and um, Lauren came with me because uh, we've had a little uh, committee working on signage for the park. We were very fortunate to have. Um, Brent Hale, who did the Farm Repression Fund design, um, uh, very generously helped us with design on the signs. Um, so, um, but the the question came up about it's it's a it's a sort of a tricky situation. Um, how to we have to have one main park sign. And it's very tricky where to put it. If we put it at the new entrance on School Street, it kind of competes with the Veterans Memorial, and it it, it doesn't doesn't feel quite right there. Um, at the back corner of the library lot, there's this a big maple tree that um, looks it's got a lot of limbs that look like they would fall on it. It doesn't seem like a like it seems like it could easily get damaged mm -hmm. there. So what we're thinking is where that, um, across from the, the library backyard where the uh, Paul Corpita's tree is right there to put the sign there, um, put that, the main sign for the park. 
We did have Brian Kane come out and take a look at that tree as well. Yeah, the tree is has been evaluated and it's in not in great health, but um, it's the only shade there is for people who come to watch baseball games. Sure. And so, uh, you know, you know, that's important. So we folks want to like preserve that until we get some of our other trees to grow up and provide shade to keep that that shade. So, um, you know, and the tree's going to need some work. So, but the but the solution that we came up with, which I personally really like, is to have um, banners uh, along School Street, um, and so. Um, like you've seen in Amherst and like the typical pole bank, right? Greenfield, yeah, they're very cost effective, and it's a way that we could create a sense of cohesion among all of the elements of this public complex. So, um, and depending how the various groups feel, but there could be one for Swampfield Historical Society, one for um, the Veterans Memorial, one for town offices, one for the library, and one for the park. Um, you know, depending on if they want them, um, but they could be have a coherent design. You know, Sunderland is the word they have in common, and then and they have Sunderland. The grass they, blowing wind or something. <laughs> um, and, but but before we move forward with that, we wanted to um, run this by you guys and see. Um, you know, we want to see. Um, if we should move forward with it, um, just want to see how you all feel about it. We have to go on the electrical poles. Yeah, because we don't have street light poles, regular like lamp post poles like you would think of usually. We don't. It's in our complete streets plan, yeah. pedestrian scale lighting on School Street, but uh, don't know we get that. how long that will take. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, we probably could reuse the mounts for them. I'm, that's, I'm just wondering if we could, because we have to put them up on electrical poles, like if we'd get any bang for the buck out of being able to reuse them on the street lamps, but probably not. Oh, it went when the street lamps go in? They probably. They I don't know what the mounting mechanism is like. I think you'd be able I, to raise the banner. Yeah. The, the, the banner, banner definitely, yeah. Expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, a lot of places change out the banners, so. It has to be a reasonable enough cost. Yeah, I mean, there actually are just enough poles in pretty much the right locations to okay. get those five things. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I've seen that model recently in East Hampton where they have their, all their vets. Yeah. And they're all over, all over the center of the town. Images of the vets, years in service, years deceased. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're on power poles as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, historically, you're, we, we've not been allowed to attach to poles, but the the utility now is divesting itself both of responsibility and assets, so they probably don't care anymore. <laughs> but we would have to ask them. Yeah, I know. And I, we just thought we would ask you first, take a stop here first before we went to that next step. Yeah. I think visually I like the idea. You can, you can yeah. kind of break it down by area Yeah. versus yet another, another ground-mounted sign in a sea of what seems like a lot of ground-mounted signs. Right. Yep. Exactly, it just kind of fades into the background. Yeah, I think it, it would like be a way of celebrating Sunderland. It would feel kind of celebratory and, um, yeah. So I think, you know, when um, we have sometimes had complaints, like, I don't know where to go, and should we have more directional signs in the center of town? It always seems like too much, and where are we going to put them? And in a way, I think if you were passing School Street, it would be actually kind of obvious that that's where something's happening. Right, right. Did you bring the proposed design? Do you have that? Um, I brought, I don't, I didn't think, the, 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 the design for the banners is so preliminary, I don't really want to like, yeah. this for sense. feedback because yeah. it's, it's very early. I do have a more developed sign for the gateway sign. I, I, did, I don't know if you have a projector if you wanted to see uh, that. Or we can always put it up on the website. Yeah, good point. Okay. Scan it and put it up on the website. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty exciting. Um, our budget is very um, tight. 
tight and with that archaeological dig it's gotten a lot tighter so um, I'm not sure how many sons we're going to be able to get into the well I'm sure if anybody can help um, sidestep the expense of cherry so <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or find a grant to pay for it yeah, or like maybe a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter or something yeah because then people from town could donate too. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Oh, I, I didn't know. never thought of that. Yeah. Um, sometimes the businesses will sponsor things, right. like no, the local businesses, yeah. you know, the banks yeah. and those yeah. places. Yeah, I, I figure what we'll do is um, if we get through uh, the archaeological dig without. Uh, Unscathed. Yeah, because if they do find something, then then could come that's going to be a whole other problem. That's, yep. Then. I don't know what this this is off, you know. Right, if they um, find some we'll be talking other. about different signs at that point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Historical sign. But we'll get through that and then get our bid package out. Um, it's gonna slow us down by a good two months. Um, yeah. um, but then once we get our bid in and see how everything then then we'll see what we need to raise funds for. Um, so, um, so, so any any more thoughts about that idea? Should we move forward? That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And then lastly, um, uh, we've been working on a donation policy because we've already heard that um, some folks are interested in donating benches, and we do need benches to be donated because there are none in the budget. Right. <laughs> And um and, and we know people uh, there's there are often um, uh, people want to donate memorial trees and this is going to be a fantastic place to for memorial trees. It's a good option for some really good legacy planting. Yeah. So, but we realize that we need um, uh, a policy for donations, and we've been advised by that from people who've been involved in parks for a long time. <laughs> And the library um, that you know you need a policy. So this is just a, a draft because there's some um, there's some issues. I just wanted to run by you. I mean, one is I mean I, I Rock and I worked on this um, quite a lot and put a lot of thought into it. Um, and it seems like we you know what the town. No, the town doesn't need another committee, but it seems like we kind of need a, a committee no uh, to manage the park. Be not only because of donations, but because we've got different groups who are sharing the space, and we just we need to like things like that tree. You know, we need we all need to be kind of coordinating together on how the space gets used. What about? at the risk of sounding like a, a recently ended television show. Um, <laughs> because we, we, have, we have just the rec committee. What about turning into the parks and rec? Because you, when you look at the uses of that, it's mm -hmm. all kind of together. Yeah. It makes sense. That way we get it without any, uh, another whole separate committee. Yeah. We beef that yeah, up. I think that would be great. That's an idea. Yeah. Without adding like more administrative stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Still manage all the controls and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, if I could, Mr. Chair, sure. tying on to what David was just mentioning, should we review the rec committee's yeah. charge, yeah. right? The good charge, idea. and then what would an oversight or a combined entity look at? I say that because. There are some of the elements are managing the physical asset, scheduling, et cetera, and then some of it is actually program. Right. And they're, exactly. they're two, two very different things. Right. And I wonder what an umbrella would look like. Mm. I've seen Good point, sir. boards that have that kind of responsibility that taking donations and accessibility are elected and not appointed. Yes. Right. Sometimes parks and recreation commissions are elected. Commissions, right. We have trustees of the town. Town Park Fireman's yep. Association, yep, and trustees. Trustees, yep. and they're elected. Hmm. 
and then you could roll the donation policy all into that as part of one exercise. Because we're talking about having council look at it too, right? Right. So. Yeah, I guess that was the next step to um, ask if you'd like to have council review it. Yeah, that would definitely be a good idea. Chair, could you ask, if I could, Mr. Chair, uh, some of your associates in STAM, what, mm -hmm. what, what they've got in other communities? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, that's one good piece about the yeah, town good. administrators network. Mm -hmm. Right, because you know, while it seems like a good idea, we also want to know well, what what doesn't work about those right. groups, and exactly. you know, what can we if we're doing this from scratch, what can we change? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the other issue um, I'm not sure about is about accepting restricted funds. Um, I've heard from various people that they're a pain in the neck dealing with restricted funds. Um, and so we had thought we'll just, what we, what's written in this current draft is no restricted funds. We just can't, we don't, we can't administer them. We don't have the bandwidth. But we want people to um, be able to donate a bench you know and a memorial tree and we want them to and and we need we need that and people need to do it and we want to facilitate that so how do you do that without right. it being a restricted fund you know the people want to know that their <coughs> donation is going to that purpose so maybe you state the types of restricted funds you don't want to deal with if you, I don't know if, uh, I mean that would be something for council you know? yeah that's the I don't know part we were getting stuck on yeah because like a bench that is technically it's a restricted fund oh, right so you, maybe you can put some strictures around around that and or maybe we can specify what kinds we do accept why, yeah why don't you why don't you define why don't you define what you'd like benches um, chairs trees trees Mm -hmm. And 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 you can if you define what you what you want, right. that would be fine. Yeah, that falls under. You your know, you can course. say somebody wants to donate a bench. Well, what kind of bench do you want to donate? Right. Well, what we were gonna th there was gonna be a companion piece to this policy. This policy is supposed to be sort of more broad, and then there we're gonna be a companion piece that specifies what benches because we don't well, want that's what i was going to ask is yeah I, I would imagine you would want you'd have a design specification exactly like, these are the types of benches that we want in the space yeah well you'd want to yeah because yeah. you want it to maintain exactly your comfort you know you want to be aesthetic principles exactly yeah and we've been advised that things can get really wild if you yeah. don't yes. specify <laughs> <laughs> well i think i mean oftentimes you wouldn't actually like encourage someone to buy you a bench, you would say, you know, you put a, you know, for a certain dollar value, you can have a bench that is named, and then the, whatever this group is, trustees committee, whatever, actually takes care of the buying, installing, whatever, mm -hmm. so that you control what's actually going out there. Um, I think yeah, I would expect the committee would. would so same thing with a tree, I mean, you maybe say you, you take funds general for these purposes if you want to have a plaque with a tree it's a minimum donation of you know you establish a dollar value mm -hmm. Probably no so, different than like in a you know a house of worship, you know, we you're building it new, we need X number of benches or whatever. You can donate them, but they're gonna be done within these rules or whatever. Sounds like what you're describing is a creation of a Riverside Park trust that can be donated to and and then gift fund, it, or something. Gift fund what call it which yeah that kind of imagine that kind of there are a handful of them already on the accountant's general ledger and it, yeah and i'd be curious to know how other newer funding mechanisms <laughs> roll into that right i use the cemetery as an example there's a expendable yeah. and non-expendable trust money comes into the non-expendable and interest born goes into the expendable and yep. extraordinary things come out of said expendable trust Agreed. It's an accountant's nightmare. They yeah, love it though. No. <laughs> it's, it's just another trust. It's like, it, you know. But it's, it's nice. So it'll be, in, in the end, it'll be worth all the work. <laughs> yeah.
together. That's what people say. Right, well, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to see sometimes. Yeah, they say, they say because they're not doing that's, Yes. Well, that's true. All right. Good. So we'll review the draft, send it to council, mm -hmm. and expand on that, and talk, talk with other communities about sure. see what they have. Great. happens there. We'll get a great yeah, t-shirt. Send them to the Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sierra. Okay, thank you. Okay, what else we got? We have approval of minutes. Uh, motion on the minutes. Uh, second. Motion made and seconded to approve our uh, mi minutes of June 18th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have 3 0 on that, Sherry. Board of Selectmen updates. Mr. Bertrand, Mr. Pierce. Um, I don't have any other meeting updates at the moment, although I, I will say I continue to get. Fantastic feedback and uh, thanks to everybody for the great work done in the parade and the fireworks and everything. It was uh, just a fantastic event and everybody did such a great job and I think people are still enjoying that. So I think it's uh, everybody should pat themselves on the back who worked on that. They did a lot of hard work and it was it paid off. A little, little post parade glow still shines. Exactly. Yep. Stuff. And a lot of, a lot of uh, thumbs up for the fireworks, too. It was a very good, uh, good show. Mr. Bergeron? Uh, I was at a meeting at Frontier for the, uh, as these minutes reflect, I missed la our last meeting uh, during the superintendent's, uh, interim superintendent candidate's uh, interview questions. And I want to thank uh, Peter for reaching out and uh, extending the opportunity to take the board's input to the session that the committee was able to participate in because the public session in those interviews are, are, are very narrow. It's not a give and take, it's a presentation of ideas. So I thank Peter for that. And I think, I think the school, as we continue to find out, the district, not the school, because we're talking about the senior managers now, the district uh, is, is um, going to be um, working hard over the next year to begin to understand uh, what new management looks like. Perfect. Anything else? I was also at the ZBA hearing for the 120 North Main. It was a it was a spirited discussion. I give the ZBA, in particular the chair, a lot of credit for good management of a meeting and that oftentimes is missed in a volunteer or an elected public sector. Uh, also, the depth and quality of information brought forward by both concerned citizens, uh, committees and chairs, uh, as well as the ZBA, uh, does, uh, shines a positive light on how robust the process around 120 North has been from the initial concept to the acceptance, to the multiple town meetings, to this point. So I, I want to get a real shout out to the ZBA for conducting a, a really thorough exam. This particular meeting was input for, from boards and committees. So conservation was there, housing, I represented housing, historic. There was a lot of that. There was time at the end for public comment and public comment is gonna continue through the next series of meetings. And again, the, the detail of information presented by RDI as well as the architects was just really professional. I, I you know, I don't like going right. to meetings until 10 o'clock at night any given day. But you know, that was wonder if you took, you even made half an effort, you'd leave informed. That's good. Thank you. Anything else? That's all. Thank you, Scotty. Um, the um, South County. South County EMS is very near moving into their new new home. Um, they received quite a donation the other day. Uh, all we and we were discussing at our last board of oversight meeting how to pay for it. Uh, one of the local companies stepped forward and donated all the furniture and bedding. And I'd like to uh, just read the press release that will be put out soon. So the company is called Atlantic Furniture. For those that don't know, Atlantic Furniture is located in, in uh, Deerfield on the other side of the bridge, uh, just, down the, just down the street in that Greenfield Road from the facility. Uh, South County EMS 
will officially open for operation at their new home this July after a four-year hunt for a permanent location. Imagine that, four years. The 88 Greenfield Road facility will soon be ready to host the EMS agency that has provided emergency medical services for Deerfield, Whiteley, and Sunderland since July 2014. Local furniture retailer Atlantic Furniture assisted with finishing touches on the new facility. Specialists in eco-friendly hardwood furniture and mattresses, Atlantic welcomed their neighbors with a collection of items to furnish the new building. South County EMS and Atlantic staff with additional assistance from South Deerfield Fire Department teamed up Wednesday to transfer, transfer the donation from Atlantic Corporate Headquarters at 5 Industrial Drive West in South Deerfield. We wanted to give back to the people who work tirelessly to support our community, said Matthew Plotkin, the facilities manager at Atlantic. This is our thank you to South County EMS for their dedication over the last four years. The donation, which equals a retail value of over $9,000, will provide the furnishings for the offices and crew quarters at South County. Thanks to Atlantic Furniture, we now have the final pieces our department needs to consolidate our operation and move into our new centrally located facility, said Chief Zachary Smith, Director of South County. This donation will provide our crews with an efficient place to work and a comfortable place to recover. It means a lot to be able to team up with a local organization that supports our emergency responders and shares in the greater mission of giving back to the community. The South County EMS donation rounds off a busy year for Atlantic in terms of community outreach. The company has participated in food drives, clothing drives, employee volunteer events, and furniture donations with local nonprofits, including Amherst Survival, Kestrel Land, and Homeward Vets. Atlantic Furniture, Atlantic Furniture was originally founded in 1983 as Watercraft Waterbeds in Northampton by current CEO Mark Vallone. I, I guess what, what I'd like to, like to add is that um, I, I think many people that went to the town meeting a few years ago, there was a lot of discussion centered around how much money was um, appropriated for the festivities, for the 300 festivities that Scott and David earlier mentioned. Um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, um, committee in sometime in the very near future will be returning money to the towns. They're able to do that for a couple of reasons. One is the high, hard work and persistence of their members going out and soliciting donations. But in addition to that, many, many local companies took the, took the uh, initiative to support their community that they reside in. I would just ask that our residents of the town of Sunderland support those businesses. Look, look in the, uh, look in the uh, um, Greenfield Recorder, the section on Sunderland that has the ads. Uh, look at the things that have been handed out the trash haulers, we had, you know, trash haulers, there were some farms, there was uh, people that donated time and materials, Norse farms, to, to, to mention one, and, and I don't want to mention them all because it's, it's just, it, it's just tremendous the amount of help that was provided. So look, look at that when next time you're going to make a purchase, because if there was probably your next purchase is probably there is someone local that helped our that not only helps our 300th committee or celebration but helps in every day um, to make a, our community a better place to live Atlantic furnishings in this this instance um, was a, the latest um, but just take an opportunity to help support and that includes looking at the banks that did and did not support Sunderland. I think, and and um, I think I think uh, finding you know doing business with banks that sub support their 
you know, it's, it's more than just being a local bank. It's actually being a local and, and promoting the local things, not just taking the money. It's more than just a one-way thing. So look at your banks. Look at the banks that you do business with. And uh, let's move. We'll all move forward. But I'd like to thank Atlantic Furnishing Furniture for their uh, generous donations to South County EMS. Thanks. Sherry, uh, Town Administrator updates. Um, I have a couple. Uh, the Highway Department is looking for a new plow and truck. Funds were appropriated at the annual town meeting under the capital. Uh, George solicited three quotes for the plow, and the low bid uh, was for Vassar's um, complete auto for the plow at $5,662. Um, the bid for the truck is from the state contract, and it's Liberty Chevrolet out of Wakefield, Mass. Um, and that bid is for $33,000 with, um, that's after the $5,000 trade um, for the old, the 2003 um, pickup. It's $33,559.30. Um, we appropriated $40,000 uh, under Article 7 of the annual town meeting for that purchase. So it's just under the 40000 for both. So you're asking us to uh, to take a vote to, yes. to purchase? Motion? Uh, motion. That's presented. I'll second for discussion. Mr. Bergeron? So the state bid we've used for larger pieces of equipment it makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. We use it for specialty items. And we use the term specialty items, particularly around cruisers. Yep. You can't just go to a dealer and buy a cruiser, right? It doesn't work that way. This is a, essentially a, a four-wheel drive outfitted plow truck with specifications. Mm -hmm. Is is the state bid really our best possible option, I guess? Or can we call three dealerships and say, hey, here's our specification. It's got to be whatever. And can they beat this? Again, this this these kinds of vehicles, to me, I buy vans once every three years. Pretty straightforward. I don't have to go out and make too many phone calls to get a van every third year. This is a plow truck. Does it make sense for us to actually look outside of the state bid? I understand the state bid can be convenient because some of the heavy lifting has been done. So, I don't know. Might not have nothing, anything to lose except an email. I, again, I'm not entirely sure. Somebody's got one on a back lot somewhere that you know happens to fit the bill. What were the specifications? Did we write the specifications, or did we simply go to the state bid and say, that's the specification, perfect. If that's the case, I've, I've participated in both purchasing as well as uh, bidding on those. And the specifications can put you out of a bid, or as a, an elected official, the specifications aren't drawn up by you, you're just grabbing them, and you're directed a particular way at that point. I don't know how, you're not gonna spend, you're not gonna save 50%. But I don't know. The only, the only thing I would say on that is that um, if you look, I mean, because it's over a certain a, a monetary yeah. threshold, yeah. Yeah. You, you get you get into the thing is that you can't. How, how do you start putting in trade-in values of vehicles, yeah. and also now now you have to publish it. You know, so you, you're getting you have to publish it in the newspapers. The cost that, of actually searching, advertising, yeah. putting. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I just think, you know, it's probably, you know, I, I guess if you had, if you had a local deal that would, that would meet or better the state bid, that's one thing. But I, I know once you start bid, when, once you start bidding, you start, you start driving, you start driving up the cost, Scott. Sure. You know, but you know. I mean, maybe that's one thing we'll talk to the ch even talk to the chief next time about looking at the cars. Maybe, maybe we should we should go out and see what they got for pricing outside of the state bid. Sure. You know, good point. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. All Hold those so. in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's three zero. I wonder if that's something that the FERCOG could do regionally on behalf of its member towns. Look at um, 
regional procurement for you know that equipment. Sure. You know, I, 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 because we talk about fire trucks and 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 we all we all we, we order we order things because we think we're special. I mean, right? some of us are. <laughs> yes, I understand that. I understand that. But that that being said, I mean, you're right, Scott. When you need a now, if where I used to work, if we wanted a pickup truck, we went we went to wherever and we said we want a Chevy or or a, a Ford, whichever gave us the best whatever gave us the best life expectancy, and we went we went to the local dealers and said we want your work truck. We want air conditioning, automatic transmission, a V8, right. four-wheel drive. Right. It's not. It's not difficult. Right. Um, you know, sometimes you, sometimes because you're doing work in municipalities, they'll give you a good price because they just want. They they know you're you're driving around town every day and they want to see that, uh, Dylan or Sweeney or or, yeah. or yeah. Sarah or. Marcon on the back because you're going to see it every day Cause, and you're local. You know it's going to be local. So, I don't know. Good point, so. Yep. Appreciate it. Any other new business? Um, complete streets. Um, so, we walked uh, the east side of South Main Street today and met with most of the neighbors on there to talk about the project a little bit. Um, I'd like to thank Brian Kane for all his work. He did um, an assessment on all the trees there. We were concerned about impact and how to minimize that <clears throat> as we're um, doing the reconstruction of the sidewalks there. So he was really helpful. He came out with one of his grad, grad students, updated our inventory and told us um, what we could do to help minimize the impact um, on that project. So today with the engineer, Sarah Campbell, Taylor Davis, and George, uh, we walked up and down the street, took a look at the project, um, the trees, met with neighbors and talked to them. Um, and a lot of them were willing to let us come over onto um, their land a couple of inches um, in order to minimize the impact to the tree. And, Excellent. You know, not much impact to their property at all. Uh, Fred Laurinaitis from the Water District came with us and uh, we marked out uh, property lines and the water gates and those things as well. Um, so on Monday we will be starting that project. Um, and it should be a couple of weeks, and then we'll have uh, nice new resurfaced uh, sidewalks from. Now, were they Day planning on dig were they planning on digging those out, taking the old ones out, or just they're, resurfacing? Um, milling, so they are going to be doing some. Oh, they're going to mill it. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I realized it was that thick. Very There's nice extension from Sugarloaf Estates to the corner of Old Amherst. And then if Old Amherst if, down. If, the, if that's the methodology, yeah, it's milled filled and graded and prepared for blacktop. So that piece on the southernmost section, again, from Sugarloaf Estate to the corner of Old Amherst, actually included a curb where I'm sure this will not, that there's no need to. Yeah. But that method looks like the method of choice. Looks good. Yeah, yeah it looks great. Garage Road, too. And so Garage Road looks yeah. very good. So, yeah. Everything's um, going well with a few bumps or tree, tree roots to, <laughs> to deal with along the way. but. Um, yeah, it's going you know the, the only the only good thing about the trees is that the the sidewalks have been there for a long time and and typically the trees there, there's a chance that the trees know that there's there's roots there and they go the other way yep. so and 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 you may think that's crazy but we've I've seen it many times. Yeah, that was Brian's oh, yeah. assessment. Too. Did he say that too? Yeah. It, it's it's funny, and and your most productive roots are usually within the first, you know, twelve to twenty four inches, eighteen inches. That's that's of, that's of, your of sweet surface, spot. Yeah. yeah, from the surface, yeah. that's your sweet spot. So the roots, if they got into the uh, the, the the sidewalks, would kind of go the other direction. So, and they love water pipes. They do. Yeah. And sewer pipes. That's right. <laughs> Any kind Good. of infrastructure. Anything else? That's it. Alrighty. Um, news from the back. Yeah, I just I sent you an email yesterday evening about the fact that the business manager at the Frontier School System is uh, taking a new job and as of the first of August. Yep. And so that'll. You know, there's a bunch of work to get somebody else 
us on board and you know see what uh, uh, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm not responsible for that, but I'm curious to see how it works out, and I'm curious to see if you know any different issues get raised or so on. Usually, when you have a change in uh, management, then somebody else comes in and maybe has a different way of doing things, and so that'll have to be paid attention to. Um, I, uh, I certainly read the same article you referenced earlier about the problems up at Frontier, and I was sort of appalled by the attitude that that indicated, like... Up at Pioneer. Up at Pioneer, for the deficits they were running, and it's sort of like, you know, the response was, well, gee, we don't really know how that happened. Like, right. well, what were you doing? Um, you know, I know as far as, you know, we've got, you asked me about getting the books audited um, when you change financial manager. It's actually you've got two different situations with Frontier because you've got the high, high school, middle school, which is their own separate financial entity, has their own, they basically handle all their own money. And then you've got the elementary schools, and the Sunderland Elementary School being one of them, and the money there is handled by the town, town treasurer, town accountant, that handle the books. And, you know, there's a lot of coordination to make that happen, but the actual dollars are controlled by folks here in town hall, and they aren't changing. So, to me, that's a, you know, if I was going to do any auditing, the first step would obviously be auditing the frontier situation. Just so you know, we audit every year. Right, and I don't know what, and I don't know enough to say what they're. You, you, you know, it, right. it's, it, it's why, I, why I mention that because many towns, and there, there was a town city to the north of us not too long ago, that they had not had an audit done in five plus years. Right. We, we do it, we do it every year. And there's no requirement that you do do it. But we, yeah, we, good we, we've always done it. And the other thing is, is, is my email to you is that when we have a change in our financial, our financial right. team, we audit just because, A, for two reasons. A, it helps a person leaving to know that they left it in good shape. And B, it helps a person coming in. And, and, and those are two. And, and it has helped us before when you have those those audits done. It's interesting, with turnover, if I could, Mr. Chair, with turnover on the financial team, where the audits have come in afterwards, there's never been a question about the intent of the board. This is just practice and procedure. That's it. It's, it's not- it's Best not, practice, yeah. It's, yeah, there's nothing not, exciting about it. There's nothing <laughs> exciting. It also, it also is not meant to you know, assign any kind of blame. It's like, no way. Just Standard like- Standard operating procedure. Yeah, if well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that as far as the elementary school is concerned, for example, sitting down there in the accountant's office is all the warrants for all the bills that have been paid. Okay, this year and every other year and all. I mean, I went down and spent a couple hours reading through some of those. And, uh, you know, they're there. And, and likewise, there are, you know, there's the general school account, but then there are also a number of other special accounts that are also, I assume, part of that annual audit. Um, and we actually had some discussion at a couple of our school committee meetings about the school lunch account because there was disagreement between what uh, uh, what uh, the business manager thought was the balance and I went and checked and the town accountant had a significantly more favorable balance and so after some discussion about that it was like we figured out what the problem had been sure. and yeah, it was much nicer to have a much more favorable balance. Than, you know, it was all of a sudden it was like almost to the extent of are we in trouble with the state because we have too large a positive balance in your school lunch thing. Now you may have noticed up there at Pioneer, I think about half the deficit overall was in the lunch program. And we're sitting, you know, with the elementary school with a current balance of something in the twenty, twenty five thousand range. Positive. Okay. So that's a good thing. Uh, and, you know, there, I've got ideas of how, how we're going to progress with that, but at this point, this will wait until we get a new business manager. Well, we, we were very fortunate that we had a business manager that had, had been in place for a number of years and done. Um, but at the same, at the same time, I, I think you also, when you bring in 
a new business manager, Patty did things differently than Don did, and and there was good there was good changes and maybe not so good changes, but it, it's good it's good that you have that opportunity to, um, and, and that's and I I think the hardest part of our job is I always said this is is hiring the hiring of people, and and I and I I I think trying to find the right person to fit, but. I learned a lot from just reading the article about, and, and I haven't stopped learning about that, about what happened in Pioneer, about how you could be a million dollars short and knowing, no one knowing that they were in trouble. That, that, that's a concern because it was very interesting. One of the people said, well, we were asking the questions and we were told we get the answer next next meeting and those answers never came and I guess that means to me that when, when we ask a question it's we follow you know we follow up with with Sherry between the meetings and and, was, and, and we have access you know we call Sherry and says okay how, what is the answer you know like I'm sure Scott's going to talk to Sherry probably two or three times about the the loan for the fire truck so I, I thought it was very interesting, and 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 I guess why why it's important <laughs> to me is that people, um, if you want to be a selectman or a school committee member or zoning, Steve Kroll couldn't have run the meeting that he ran if he was uh, just just came to meetings on Wednesday night. He puts a he puts a lot of time into that. He does. he does. He puts a lot of time into making sure that he thinks of the questions before they're answered, so that you can run an effective meeting. And the same thing with school committee members. If you you know if you think you just have to go to a Tuesday meeting once a month or for seven months a year, eight months out of a year, I don't think you're going to be a school school committee member because because there's a lot. There's a lot to do in the job well. My problem actually has been getting the time from the administrators to, you know, have them willing to talk to me, but not as much as I want to talk to them to find out more about what's going on. Yeah. And so that's that's always been an issue because they're taking care of five schools. Yeah. And so there's a it's a serious workload over there and they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, but it makes it, you know, I do a bunch of my looking just on my own where I know that there's sources of information, but it's not like somebody has the time to sit down and educate every school committee member that comes along. And, and you know, school committee is a little different maybe than others because they're, I mean, I would say that most school committee members, are, well, clear majority of school committee members are there because they got kids in the school and that's what there's their first priority and they don't come from a background of, concerned or interested in how the budget is run other than gee if money runs out it means the teacher's not getting hired then all of a sudden they're concerned but you know that to me is perfectly reasonable it's just the way people are and uh, you know there are a couple others on the whole you know if you look at Frontier as a whole there are a couple other people that I, I've sort of figured out are you know, also you know very interested in actual budgets and how they're you know what goes into them and so on and uh, I think it's a useful thing. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have got on the, com you know, I sort of felt weird getting on the committee because you don't have any kids, you don't have any grandkids, and then I thought, no, hold it, there's more to, you know, running a school is a whole big operation, and there are a lot of things in it that aren't just about how, you know, how the... Sixty-five percent of the town's expenses go to the schools. Our, our town, about. So it's a, it's a huge... So it's we're... we're, we're you know, you were doing transfers earlier and talking about closing things up, and we've got sort of the same process at the school, even though it sort of works differently. And at our last meeting, we, you know, we're getting preliminary sort of figures from how the current, well, it's now the previous fiscal year, it just ended, FY18, is, you know, and, and uh, it, it certainly was ending in the black. Um, and in terms of, of okay, then what do you do? Because like it or not, the school has a history, as far as I know, of basically if there's money left over, 
doesn't have an E and D account, right. separate E and D account. Um, it sure tries hard not to be coming back to the town at that point, saying, "Whoops, you know, we need a transfer because we're we're uh, we're in the red for the year." And there's clearly been years when you know you've talked about freezes here on spending and freezes at the school are probably even more common. Um, but this year, the, the, the number's clearly in the black, and uh, we had some discussion about, you know, what uses is going to be put to, and there were about three smaller items that had to deal with sort of maintenance stuff. Uh, uh, one was sort of the, the oil tank, of us, you know, that small thing, and one was carpeting in the whole uh, principal and secretary's office that was really shot. And, I think the third one, they're all like a thousand or two, something like that, with some blind continuation of work where they needed blinds done. And then the next thing was going to be to basically, I'll tell you this and then maybe I'll explain it, put money back into the school choice fund. Meaning if you have leftover money, okay, you take and you put, uh, because school choice was paying for some salary, uh, you basically you know, change the accounting for the year and you take this person's salary or this part of this person's salary and you pay for it out of the regular budget and therefore you have more money in the school choice fund rolled over available for next year's budget cycle. Uh, and the number we were looking at there was something on the order I think of around 20000 because you know, and that to me was like real good because I'm worried like crazy about what's going to happen out in the next it, budget cycle. And that's just using, that's just using the opportunity at the end of your transfer to pick up some of the expense that would have been covered by choice. Is that what you're describing? So the no, I, it's sort of like, you know, you really... We get in, you know, if you, if you think about how school choice is structured at the school in terms of where you are willing, or where you are making available. You're basically saying that if you have, uh, if you look at the kindergarten and through, I think it's second grade, you're saying the optimum class size is 18 kids, and if you're looking at third through sixth, you're saying the optimum size is 20 kids. And then, so if you've got a class that has, you know, it's, uh, 18 is the op meaning, optimum, meaning, yeah, I mean, people would love it if you only had 12 in the class, but, you know, there's financial optimization also. You can't afford to do that. Um, but if you had a class that was 15, let's say, in uh, uh, first grade, okay, and then you, you know, maybe, maybe you had, and we got two first grades, so maybe let's say you had 33, and maybe you'd say, well, you know, we don't want to go right up to 36 because we never know what people are going to show up that live in town, but let's put out, you know, one or two slots there. So then you say, well, what's the, you know, what's the cost of that new school choice person coming in? Because you're talking about, you know, marginal costs versus fixed costs. And, you know, a person comes in and it's not like, you know, you don't need another teacher to teach that extra kid or two in that first grade, in one of those first grade classes. Okay. So, you know, ideally, the cost of that additional school choice person is way less than the average cost of education in the school. And then in addition, we get, because of the way the state works the rules, if there are special ed costs of that kid coming in, they follow along. Okay, so that we get 5000 per kid, but we actually got, uh, and we had about 40 kids, I think, this year in school choice, but we actually got just about an equal number, equal amount of special ed money. Okay, so we're actually getting just about 10000 a kid, okay, which is pretty substantial chunk. Uh, we do have the right to refuse a special ed kid if um, providing the services would be disruptive enough to the program as we run it that it really would require major changes and at that point you could go back. You know, I think the state has to approve but you could basically say, no, we can't handle this within our normal resources and stuff. But anyway, getting back to um, the school choice, we um, because you're only putting them in places where you're making more efficient uses of your resources, okay, the numbers work out better than you think they do. Okay. 
But so then it's, it's still a question of we plunk, we, 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 we have the school choice separate fund. Okay, there's a certain amount of money that we think is going to be into it. We plan on spending most of it these days. We're long gone from the time when you used to accumulate it one year, spend none of it until the following year. Okay, we're now spending it the year we're taking it in. Um, and it gets spent for, you know, it doesn't really matter what it gets spent for. Okay, it just must straight sort of, you know, how the how money gets, you know, does it matter whether this teacher or that teacher or no teacher at all but a bunch of aides gets paid from this chunk of money? Not really. Okay, what really matters is how much are you spending of it and how much you're going to have left over for the next year. Okay, and that's what, so I'm not looking, and, and so when it was said, well, we're going to, you know, take 20-some thousand and, you know, use some general budget money to pay that 20,000 that was going to come out of school choice, I don't care which, you know, if that's part of a, you know, a teacher of a certain grade or if that's one of the specialized teachers or if that's, you know, whatever, it's just, uh, because that doesn't really matter. Okay, it, uh, you know, what matters is where are we going to be with that fund when it comes to next year's contribution to the general budget? Because, it's, you know, we've been concerned that uh, the amount that uh, was left over at the end of the year, at the end of, you know, the budget, the way the budget is for the year just starting now, was very low. And so if that is now going to be, you know, partly it's set up that way because then all your variances are going to come in a positive direction. Okay, you're going to get, you don't include any revenue from kids that sign up for school choice for the first time here, like in the last couple months. Okay, all of those, you don't count that money until you actually have the kids on board. Uh, likewise, if you have any of these sped increments, uh, you don't get to count the ones for any kids that are coming on board, okay, until they're actually here and you actually know how much it's going to be. So that hopefully those will be numbers that will be enough so that when six months from now we're looking at the budget for the next budget cycle, yeah, that's flush enough that we can make a contribution that's at least equivalent to what we've been doing this year. Because the moment that has to shrink, okay, then it's like you take your normal increases that we're well familiar with and then you have to say, yeah, we're getting less money, we can take less money out of school choice and that's when you get clobbered and you don't want to go there. So, that's sort of the situation. Um, don't have final stuff on that. And I'm sort of curious, you know, I would love to be able to walk over to Patty tomorrow, and say, or not tomorrow, but uh, Thursday, and say, great, let's sit down and go over all this stuff. But, and she'd be the first one to say she's got five budgets and she's got all this sort of stuff, and now she's got four weeks to basically take care of as much as she can and so on. So I, I sent her a, a lengthy email today and said, you know, the list of things I still want to talk about and get from her before she left, but I'll have to see how that goes. Okay, good. Okay? Thank you, Peter. So, so that's where we're at. I, I, sorry for talking so long, but it's like you say, schools are a big part of Understood. And it's good, stuff, it's so. good insight to have yeah. that. You know, I was partly concerned, I mean, you know, as far as Tom's thing about getting audited, and I wasn't sure if that meant I need to go over there and make a fuss about getting the school books audited, but I think our elementary school books are already being audited, yeah. in fact. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. I'll still ask about the frontier. Sure. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Sherry, um, con contract renewal for Furcog Accounting Services? Um, we do have a contract renewal from uh, Furcog for Accounting Services. The um, contract is for three years. It hasn't been reviewed by council yet. Um, what I would like to ask the board is to consider maybe a one-year renewal. I'd like to revisit this. Um, there's a there's a few things. Um, That's fine. And one is hours. Yep. The eleven hours. I think it might be time to think about increasing those hours. And I'd like to kind of um, look at the scope a little bit um, That's fine. closer. It's a good time yeah, to do that kind of review. I, I agree. I agree. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Especially after this past the past year, we absolutely. I agree. Do you want? Sherry, that as a recommendation vote from the board. So you if it's okay, um, in their cover letter, um, Bob says that they're open to visiting the term, and I just 
would ask that we go with a one year just so that we can um, take a look at the services and maybe like I said I think there might be um, I know there is a need to increase the hours and just to maybe provide um, more clarification on the services okay. I'd like to request that the board consider requiring the accountant and all members of the financial management team attend the town meeting attend financial management team meetings, set aside time to meet with department heads. The 11 hours isn't, isn't uh, cutting it. And the people are getting frustrated because they're not getting what they need. And I don't think the accountant's getting what he needs. Yeah. So right. I think it's Makes time sense. to take a look. Okay, yeah. good. All righty. Um, so you're gonna bring that for, back to us in a couple yeah. weeks. Uh, police department's all set. The uh, appropriation transfer request. Yes, we um, that was exactly. voted with the those. Yeah. The only okay. other thing is the notification from Frontier on the E and D funds. Yep. Did you wanna? Did you wanna? I, I mean, I'm comfortable voting that. I know that what this is going toward. Yeah, and I, I am too. I actually, I'm, 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 I'm ecstatic mm. that we're finally mm. we got noticed. That yeah. we're finally following yeah. the law. I, I just, I think that's a, a huge step forward. So, I move to allow the use of twenty thousand dollars of E and D at the Frontier Regional uh, School <coughs> for uh, building security modifications, as requested by the su interim superintendent, acting superintendent. Sorry. So, do, should we t should we that, or just take have a vote, have a motion to take no action on? I think we'd send Tom since we had a request sent to us. An affirmative uh, vote would yeah. be a nice reciprocity. Yeah. Okay, so if we take the vote, part of your motion would be for Sherry to send a letter to the Correct. interim acting superintendent. Correct. And that would okay. be for yes. So we have a motion made and seconded. Second with ecstasy for you, Tom. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, you have a <coughs> three-zero vote to write a letter. If, if I could, Mr. Chair, expand briefly on this. Yes, sir. So as part of the uh, Capital Working Group over at Frontier, um, the uh, list of maintenance, major maintenance, capital requests, bonding authorization, all of that uh, dialogue, uh, part of that dialogue was the use of available funds, uh, including E&D, if it made sense, including um, I mean, warrant articles, if it makes sense, or borrowing, if it makes sense, mm -hmm. the creation of a capital stabilization fund, if it makes sense. This is one of the, this is the second piece now in this year uh, where they've used uh, suggestions that have come out of that dialogue. Good. And I, I applaud the administration for thinking that way. In spite of South Deerfield's member choosing not to continue. South Deerfield member, South Deerfield's member felt that it was, it was clearly um, a waste of his time to be there. Okay. Moving on. Anything else? Enough said. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Only after we wish everyone a... Uh, That's right. A safe and happy holiday. A safe, happy, joyous uh, celebration of our country's uh, foundation. And just take a moment to reflect upon the, on the goals that our forefathers set out for us. Um, I, I think that's probably the most important thing. And remember that they didn't always get along, and yet they got the job done. I I I believe I I believe I read that Mr. Washington and Mr. Adams didn't didn't love one another. They did not. What do you think? Uh, they did not. And and but and yet here we are today. Because well, they it, it, there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with having competing yeah. ideas. It's just that you have to respect all the de ideas that are brought forward. And in the end, you get a job to do. If Correct. we're all thinking alike, then we're not thinking, right? So there you go. Yep. There you go. Well, then I'm just going to vote no on adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have a vote. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. All Pat. opposed, say nay. Nay. Two or one. <laughs> We aren't. There you go. I lose, but I go. We're all thinking. We're going to go home anyway. <laughs>